Welcome back movie fans, it is day 6 of the Venice Film Festival 2022. Thank you so much for clicking on my review for Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry Darling, the big ticket item of this year's festival for a lot of reasons where we follow 1950s couple Alice and Jack, who live in the utopian experimental community of Victory, where every day the husbands tirelessly work in the mysterious Victory Project headquarters, while the wives get to relish in the beauty, luxury and debauchery of their lives in exchange for discretion and unquestioned commitment. But soon enough, cracks in their idyllic existence begin to show forcing Alice to begin questioning her marriage, her life, and her entire existence. Now, there will be no spoilers for Don't Worry Darling in this video, you are safe, but we do have to start with the elephant in the room. And no, I'm not talking about the controversy because that actually does not affect the film whatsoever, at least that I could notice, at least that I felt or could see, but Harry Style and the infamous clip that was dropped on Twitter this past week. The clip in context of the film is better. Once you understand all the layers of everything that is going on, and we're going to talk about it in a spoiler-free manner, it adds up to why his performance in that moment is so questionable. I found Styles to be rather solid in the film, but he is rather inconsistent. There are a lot of moments where I thought he displayed a ton of range and genuine emotion, but then there are other moments where you can just see the facade of a performance. You cannot accuse him of not trying in the film, but the problem is that you see the attempt and how it utterly fails at points, further illustrating how everyone else is on a far superior level as actors. But before we keep dissecting this twisted Alice in Wonderland story, I need to know your thoughts on Don't Worry Darling in the comments below. Have you seen it at the festival? Have you seen it in theaters by the time you catch this video? Anything and everything down there. And if you're enjoying this Venice Film Festival coverage, if you're enjoying this review, or if you just love movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. And since I began this review discussing a performance, let's talk about this star-studded cast, from Nick Kroll to Gemma Chan to Olivia Wilde herself, and even Kiki Lane in a small part. Every single person in this film maximizes their minutes on screen. But the show stealers here are number one, Chris Pine an hypnotic and charismatic performance that is at the same time kind of grimy and you just know this dude is going to lead you down the wrong path. His performance is a perfect balance between the worst aspects of a corporate visionary and the best aspects of a motivational life coach. You just want to hear this dude talk because he is so charming and so charismatic and he clearly knows what he's saying but you just know this dude is no good. I actually want to see Pine play actual Charles Manson. He comes across as this enigmatic cult leader, and I just know he has the chops and the nuance performance talent for it. But the emotional anchor of Don't Worry Darling, who carries us through this engaging mystery as it unravels, is Alice herself, Florence Pew, who is an absolute force of nature. You just get this sense of paranoia as she sees her perfect life slowly but surely crumbling around her. She delivers an effortlessly nuanced performance, instilling a sense of fear in us with every step she takes in trying to expose what is actually going on, in trying to find out the truth behind this facade, and the film feels more and more sinister as you see the trickle-down effect of her actions and her questioning, and how the world around her seems to have constant eyes on her, and power over her. What's more frightening in this film above anything else is how Alice feels utterly powerless. Not only in her community, not only in trying to discover the truth, but even in her marriage. Don't Worry Darling is an engaging mystery. It is thrilling to watch. 
But beyond the surface, it is a layered examination on so many rich themes from love to obsession, control, marriage dynamics between men and women, and even the cost of happiness, which is the one that hits closest to home. And the more the film unravels, the more fear, the more tension, the more anxiety you feel, because more and more you feel like you are in Alice's position. The film takes us into this first-person point of view where you just find out things along with Alice. So every time she notices something, you notice something. Every time she's stopped from finding out something more, you are stopped as well. It's a great way to engage us in this mystery, which is praise to Olivia Wilde's direction. This is one ambitious film for something that is just her second feature. It aspires to so much more than Booksmart. It is bigger than it on so many different levels, maybe to a fault, and we'll talk about issues in a bit, but her sure-handed direction brings us into this immersive world that she constructs so well, piece by piece, as she begins to peel back the layers in these characters and in the world that they inhabit. Furthermore, this film has one hauntingly beautiful score that sends chills up and down my spine as it slowly trickles in, lurking in the background, contrasting the gorgeous visuals. This is one of the best shot movies of the entire year. The cinematography is just absolutely stunning, which is fitting because we need to fall in love with this world. We need to fall in love with this reality, much like Alice has before beginning to question it. Cinematographer Matthew Libatique and Olivia Wilde pull off some ingenious visual tricks throughout the mystery unraveling to give us hints as to what is going on. And that is the best part of this film. It's direction, cinematography, performance. The script needed at least one more rewrite. Without any spoilers, Don't Worry Darling is obviously building to a certain reveal. But once that reveal comes, the film has no time to give it more depth or nuance or explore it beyond the surface. Once we get the reveal, and the reveal is great, and the mystery unraveling is great, it is a slow burn thriller that is very effective, but once we get our answers, it's time to resolve everything. It's a real shame because the mystery we unfold is so rich and compelling, but the resolution and ideas explored feel undercooked in execution. Don't worry, Darling clearly played all its chips into the actual reveal, but not the consequences and outcome of it, where all the nuance, hidden meanings, symbolism, and even logistics into the world building and character motivations are suddenly rushed and never explored to a deeper level. Level. It's just worried about getting to the resolution, which is a shame because as it is a slow burn thriller, as it is focusing on seeing this young woman's life crumbling around her, where it instills this sense of paranoia and it feels like she's self-destructing the good life she has, we feel so much for her. And after that, it moves so fast, leaving so many unnecessary, unanswered questions it left me wanting more. It's a film that is 80% into greatness, but it falls just shy of it. But this faulty script is elevated by the sure-handed direction of Olivia Wilde in Don't Worry Darling, a paranoia-inducing thriller examining the thin line between love and control, marriage dynamics, and the cost of happiness, where Florence Pugh's masterful performance is the emotional anchor in one of the most beautifully shot movies of 2022. I'm giving Don't Worry Darling a B. That's my Venice Film Festival review of Don't Worry Darling. Let me know what you make of Olivia Wilde's sophomore directorial effort in the comments below. Did you catch it at the festival, in the cinemas, whenever you find this video, anything and everything down there. Thank you so much for watching. Big shout out to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll be back very soon. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.